The sun rises over the horizon, casting its golden glow across the vast expanse of the Caribbean Sea. Waves gently lap against the wooden hull of a ship as the crew goes about their morning routines, unaware of the shadow that looms ever closer. Suddenly, a black flag with a skull and crossbones rises above the distant horizon, sending a shiver down the spine of every sailor on board. The golden age of piracy has arrived. Between the 1650s and the 1730s, the seas were ruled by fearsome pirates who struck terror into the hearts of those who dared to sail the ocean's vast waters. This was an era where lawlessness reigned supreme and legends were born. It was a time when the line between hero and villain blurred, and the call of the sea promised both unimaginable riches and untimely death. The golden age of piracy began as European nations expanded their territories and established colonies in the New World. The Spanish, English, French, and Dutch competed fiercely for control over the lucrative trade routes that connected Europe, Africa, and the Americas. Ships laden with gold, silver, spices, and other treasures became prime targets for those bold enough to seize them. Pirates, driven by greed, revenge, or a thirst for adventure, found their calling in these turbulent waters. In the shadowy taverns and hidden coves of the Caribbean, pirates planned their daring raids. They were outcasts and renegades, fleeing the constraints of society and seeking freedom on the open sea. Men and women from all walks of life joined the ranks of these sea rovers. They swore allegiance to no nation, their loyalty lying only with their fellow crewmates and the code they lived by. At the heart of this era were larger-than-life figures whose names still echo through history. Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, was one of the most infamous pirates to ever sail the seas. With his wild, tangled beard and fierce eyes, he struck terror into all who crossed his path. Blackbeard was known to tie slow-burning fuses into his beard, lighting them during battles to create a fearsome, demonic appearance that sent shivers down the spines of his enemies. Then there was Henry Morgan, a pirate who became a legend in his own time. Morgan's daring raids on Spanish strongholds and his incredible escape from near-certain death made him a hero to some and a villain to others. His exploits were so legendary that he was eventually knighted by the English crown and appointed as the lieutenant governor of Jamaica. Among the many fierce women who took to piracy, and Bonnie and Mary Red stood out. Disguised as men, they fought alongside their male counterparts, proving that the call of the sea knew no gender. Their bravery and tenacity made them legendary figures in their own right, and their stories continue to inspire generations. The pirates of the Golden Age lived by a code, a set of rules that governed their lives on the open sea. This code ensured a degree of fairness and order among the crew, a stark contrast to the brutal and often corrupt societies they had left behind. They shared their plunder equally, cared for their wounded, and made decisions democratically. This sense of camaraderie and mutual respect bound them together in the face of constant danger. Pirate ships were swift and agile, designed to outmaneuver and outfight the larger, heavily armed merchant vessels and naval ships. These ships, often captured and repurposed by the pirates, became symbols of freedom and rebellion. Each ship was a floating fortress, equipped with cannons and manned by a crew ready to fight to the death to protect their newfound liberty. The Black Flag, or Jolly Roger, became the ultimate symbol of pirate terror. Each captain designed their own version, often featuring skulls, bones, and other fearsome imagery. When a ship spotted the Jolly Roger on the horizon, it knew that a relentless and brutal attack was imminent. The sight of the flag alone was often enough to force a surrender, as sailors feared the wrath of the pirates more than death itself. Pirates were not just ruthless plunderers, they were also skilled navigators and shrewd tacticians. They knew the seas like the back of their hand, using the currents, winds, and hidden coves to their advantage. Their knowledge of the ocean was unmatched, allowing them to evade capture and strike with deadly precision. As the golden age of piracy progressed, the threat these outlaws posed became too great to ignore. Nations began to take action, deploying naval forces to hunt down and eradicate the pirate menace. The once thriving pirate havens were besieged, and many pirates met their end at the gallows. Yet, their spirit of defiance and their thirst for freedom could not be so easily extinguished. 
The legacy of the golden age of piracy lives on, immortalized in countless books, movies, and legends. The stories of Blackbeard, Henry Morgan, and Bonnie, and Mary Ridd continue to captivate our imaginations, reminding us of a time when the seas were ruled by those daring enough to challenge the world. The golden age of piracy was more than just a chapter in history, it was a testament to the human spirit's relentless pursuit of freedom and adventure. The night is dark and silent, the vast ocean a mirror of the starlit sky above. Out of the darkness, a ship approaches with silent intent, its crew moving like shadows. The ancient world knew this fear, the sudden and deadly strike of pirates, as old as the seas themselves. Piracy's origins trace back thousands of years, to a time when seafaring was in its infancy. The earliest pirates were the Sea Peoples, marauders who terrorized the eastern Mediterranean around 1200 BCE. They struck fear into the hearts of the ancient Egyptians and other coastal civilizations, their swift and brutal attacks leaving a trail of destruction. These early pirates set the stage for a legacy that would evolve and persist through the ages. As centuries passed, the Phoenicians, Greeks, and Romans battled pirates who haunted the Mediterranean. Pirates like the Cilicians disrupted trade and communication, growing so bold that they captured Julius Caesar himself, holding him for ransom. When Caesar was released, he sought revenge, leading a fleet to destroy the Cilician strongholds, showing that even the mighty Roman Empire was not immune to the scourge of piracy. Through the Middle Ages, piracy continued to plague the seas. Viking raiders from Scandinavia became the new terror of the waters. Known for their fearsome longships, the Vikings sailed not only the North Sea but ventured into the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and even as far as North America. They were warriors and explorers, their raids leaving an indelible mark on the history of Europe. As Europe emerged from the Dark Ages, piracy transformed yet again. The Italian city-states of Genoa and Venice became naval powers, and their merchant fleets became targets for corsairs. These Muslim pirates from North Africa, known as the Barbary Corsairs, operated from bases in Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli. They captured ships and enslaved thousands of Europeans, their reach extending into the Atlantic and even to the shores of England and Ireland. The rise of the Ottoman Empire in the 15th century brought new dimensions to piracy. Ottoman corsairs, such as the infamous Barbarossa brothers, terrorized the Mediterranean, capturing Christian ships and coastal settlements. The line between privateering and piracy blurred as these corsairs operated with the blessing of the Ottoman sultans, their attacks part of the larger conflict between Christendom and Islam. In the 16th century, European nations began to establish colonies in the New World, setting the stage for a new era of piracy. Spanish galleons laden with gold and silver from the Americas became prime targets. English privateers like Sir Francis Drake were licensed by their governments to attack Spanish ships, bringing immense wealth and prestige. However, the thin line between privateer and pirate meant that once the wars ended, many of these men continued their predatory ways, now outside the law. By the 17th century, several factors converged to give rise to what would become the golden age of piracy. The Treaty of Madrid in 1670 between Spain and England aimed to curb privateering, leaving many skilled seafarers without employment. The end of the Nine Years' War in 1697 saw thousands of sailors and privateers unemployed. These men, adept at maritime warfare and with no place in peacetime economies, turned to piracy as a means of survival. The vast, unpoliced waters of the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, and the coast of Africa offered rich pickings for these sea rovers. Merchant ships were often lightly armed, and the wealth they carried was irresistible. The scattered nature of colonial outposts meant that law enforcement was weak and slow, providing pirates with safe havens where they could rest, refit, and sell their plunder. Economic conditions also played a crucial role. The promise of wealth attracted men from all walks of life. For many, the harsh conditions of naval and merchant service, with its brutal discipline and poor pay, made piracy an appealing alternative. The allure of freedom, the possibility of riches, and the brotherhood of the pirate crew were powerful motivators. Additionally, political and social upheaval in Europe contributed to the rise of piracy. 
the English Civil War, the Glorious Revolution, and ongoing conflicts between European powers created a pool of disaffected men who found in piracy an escape from the turmoil at home. The rigid class structures of the time meant that social mobility was almost impossible, but piracy offered a way to break free from those constraints, to be judged not by birth, but by ability and bravery. Thus, from the ancient sea peoples to the Viking raiders, from the Barbary corsairs to the privateers turned pirates, the history of piracy is rich with tales of adventure, brutality, and rebellion. As the 17th century drew to a close, the stage was set for the most infamous pirates of all to emerge, creating a legacy that would last far beyond their time on the waves. The wind howled through the sails, the ship rocking gently on the waves as the crew gathered on deck. Faces hardened by the sea, eyes sharp and vigilant, they stood united under a flag of freedom and rebellion. Yet, despite their rough exteriors and lawless reputations, these men and women lived by a code, an unwritten but fiercely enforced set of rules that bound them together. This was the Pirate Code, a beacon of order in a world of chaos, where loyalty was everything and betrayal meant death. Pirates were often viewed as ruthless, bloodthirsty outlaws, but beneath the surface of their terrifying image lay a complex society governed by its own rules. The pirate code was born out of necessity. Life at sea was harsh and unforgiving, and survival depended on unity and discipline. The code provided a framework for this, ensuring that every member of the crew knew their rights, duties, and the consequences of their actions. One of the most famous examples of the pirate code is found in the articles of Bartholomew Roberts, a notorious pirate captain whose exploits became legendary. Roberts, known as Black Bart, led one of the most successful pirate fleets of the Golden Age, capturing hundreds of ships and amassing a fortune in treasure. But his success was not just due to his fearsome reputation, it was also because of the strict code he enforced among his crew. Robert's articles were detailed and specific, covering everything from the distribution of plunder to the punishment for theft and desertion. His code was a reflection of his belief in fairness and order. Each man was entitled to a share of the spoils, with the captain and officers receiving slightly more, but the wealth was divided in a way that ensured everyone benefited. This sense of shared fortune fostered loyalty and camaraderie among the crew, creating a bond that was crucial for their survival and success. One of the key aspects of the pirate code was the equal say every crew member had in important decisions. On most pirate ships, the captain was elected by the crew and could be deposed if he failed to lead effectively. This democratic approach was a stark contrast to the rigid hierarchies of naval and merchant ships where the captain's word was law. On a pirate ship, decisions about where to sail, whom to attack, and how to divide the loot were made collectively, ensuring that each crew member had a stake in the outcome. Punishment under the pirate code was swift and often brutal, but it was also designed to maintain order and discipline. Theft from the common stock, cowardice in battle, and desertion were among the most serious offenses and were met with severe penalties, ranging from marooning on a deserted island to death. These harsh measures served as a deterrent, ensuring that the crew remained committed to their shared cause and adhered to the code. The pirate code also addressed the treatment of prisoners and captives. While pirates were feared for their ruthless attacks, they often showed mercy to those who surrendered without a fight. Captains like Roberts understood that terrorizing their victims could lead to resistance and bloodshed, so they preferred to offer quarter in exchange for cooperation. This pragmatic approach not only minimized casualties, but also increased the likelihood of a swift and successful raid. Another notable pirate who enforced a strict code was Henry Morgan, whose articles were renowned for their emphasis on discipline and order. Morgan, who later became a privateer and was knighted for his services to the English crown, understood the importance of maintaining control over his men. His code included provisions for compensation to those injured in battle, a practice that ensured loyalty and courage among the crew. Even the infamous Blackbeard, known for his terrifying appearance and brutal tactics, upheld a code that governed his ship and crew. Blackbeard's articles emphasized the importance of unity and mutual support, with rules that required crew members to share in the work and the spoils equally. This sense of fairness and shared purpose was a key factor in his ability to command loyalty and instill fear in his enemies. 
The pirate code was not a monolithic set of rules, but rather a collection of principles that varied from ship to ship and captain to captain. Each crew adapted the code to suit their needs and circumstances, but the underlying themes of fairness, loyalty, and discipline remained constant. These principles were the glue that held the pirate community together, allowing them to operate effectively in the lawless and perilous world of the high seas. In the end, the pirate code was more than just a set of rules, it was a lifeline for those who had chosen the perilous path of piracy. It provided a sense of order in a world of chaos, a framework for justice in a life of crime, and a bond of loyalty in a society of outcasts. For the men and women who sailed under the black flag, the code was a beacon of hope and a testament to their shared dream of freedom and fortune on the open sea. Under the blazing sun and the endless blue skies of the Caribbean, the echoes of raucous laughter and clinking tankards reverberated through the air. These sounds marked the heart of the infamous pirate havens, where outlaws of the sea found refuge and camaraderie. In these bustling enclaves, the flag of freedom flew high, and the promise of wealth and adventure lured many a soul to its shores. Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, was one of the most notorious pirate strongholds. This island, with its natural harbor and strategic location, became a sanctuary for pirates fleeing the clutches of law and order. Here, the rule of the sea prevailed over any nation's claim. The bustling port teemed with ships bearing the Jolly Roger, and its streets were lined with taverns where deals were struck and tales of daring raids were shared. Nassau was more than a hideout, it was a community. Pirates, cutthroats, and outcasts from all corners of the world congregated here, creating a melting pot of cultures and creeds. The political and social structures in Nassau were unlike any other. Democracy thrived among the pirates, with captains elected by their crews and decisions made collectively. This sense of equality and shared purpose forged a tight-knit society, bound by the codes they lived by and the dreams they chased. To the north, on the rocky coast of Hispaniola, lay Tortuga, another legendary pirate haven. Tortuga's rugged terrain provided natural defenses, making it an ideal base for those who lived outside the law. French buccaneers first established Tortuga as a refuge, and it quickly grew into a bustling pirate hub. The island was a place of wild freedom, where the constraints of European society were left far behind. Tortuga's social structure was as diverse as its inhabitants. Pirates, escaped slaves, and disenfranchised settlers found common ground in their defiance of authority. The island's leaders were often chosen from among the most successful and respected pirates, and their rule was accepted because it was fair and just. The economy of Tortuga thrived on the plunder brought in from countless raids, and its markets were filled with goods from across the seas. Port Royal, on the southern coast of Jamaica, earned the moniker the wickedest city on earth. This bustling port became the epicenter of pirate activity in the Caribbean. Its strategic location near the shipping lanes made it a prime spot for pirates to sell their loot and resupply their ships. Port Royal's taverns and brothels buzzed with life, catering to the needs and desires of pirates who sought respite from their perilous lives at sea. Port Royal's political and social landscape was complex and vibrant. While the British authorities attempted to maintain some semblance of order, the pirates effectively controlled the city. The lines between legitimate traders, privateers, and outright pirates were often blurred, creating a society where lawlessness and commerce coexisted. The wealth that flowed through Port Royal had a profound impact on the local economy, attracting merchants, craftsmen, and adventurers seeking their fortune. These pirate havens were not just dens of iniquity, they were vital to the pirates' survival and success. They provided safe harbors where pirates could repair their ships, rest their crews, and plan their next exploits. The local economies of these havens were heavily influenced by the influx of plundered goods. Taverns, inns, and markets flourished, and the wealth of the pirates trickled down to the local population, creating a symbiotic relationship between the outlaws and the townsfolk. The impact of these pirate strongholds extended beyond their immediate surroundings. The presence of such powerful and autonomous communities challenged the authority of colonial powers and disrupted established trade routes. European nations, 
already locked in fierce competition for dominance in the New World, found their efforts thwarted by the unpredictable and relentless pirate fleets. Pirate havens also became beacons of hope for those seeking escape from oppression. Enslaved Africans, indentured servants, and disenfranchised individuals from various backgrounds found refuge and a sense of belonging in these communities. The promise of freedom and equality, though often romanticized, offered a stark contrast to the rigid hierarchies and brutalities of colonial society. The allure of the pirate life was strong, but it was not without its perils. The constant threat of naval expeditions aimed at eradicating piracy loomed large. Yet, even as governments intensified their efforts to crush these havens, the spirit of defiance and freedom that fueled them remained unbroken. Pirates knew that their time in these havens could be fleeting, but they lived each day with a fervor and passion that left an indelible mark on history. In the end, the pirate havens of Nassau, Tortuga, and Port Royal were more than mere hideouts, they were the lifeblood of the pirate world. They embodied the ideals of freedom, equality, and rebellion against oppressive systems. Through the laughter and the clinking of tankards, the plotting of new adventures, and the fierce battles fought to protect their sanctuaries, the pirates of these havens left behind a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire to this day. The sea was a vast, untamed wilderness, and in its depths, legends were born. Among the waves and the spray of the salt water, certain names rose above the rest, their deeds etched into the annals of history. These were the pirate captains whose exploits and adventures became the stuff of legend, their stories told and retold, growing more fantastical with each telling. Blackbeard, perhaps the most infamous pirate of them all, was a figure of sheer terror and dark charisma. Born Edward Teach, he became known as Blackbeard for the long, thick beard that framed his face, often tied with ribbons and set alight to create a fearsome image. His flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was a sight to behold, bristling with cannons and manned by a crew of ruthless cutthroats. Blackbeard's reign of terror spanned the early 18th century. His tactics were as much psychological as they were physical. He understood the power of fear, and he wielded it like a weapon. He once blockaded the port of Charleston, South Carolina, holding the city hostage until his demands were met. His boldness knew no bounds, yet despite his terrifying reputation, there are accounts of him being a fair leader to his crew. He ruled with an iron fist, but also ensured that his men shared in the spoils and were treated with a measure of respect. Blackbeard met his end in a dramatic battle off the coast of North Carolina in 1718. The Royal Navy had finally caught up with him, and in a fierce and bloody fight, he was killed. His legend, however, did not die with him. Stories of his ghostly ship and hidden treasures continue to captivate imaginations, blurring the lines between myth and reality. Henry Morgan, another towering figure in the world of piracy, led a life filled with daring raids and grand conquests. Unlike Blackbeard, Morgan was a privateer, holding a commission from the English crown. He was both feared and respected, his name synonymous with both terror and glory. Morgan's most famous exploit was the sack of Panama City in 1671. He led his men through treacherous jungles to surprise the city's defenders, capturing one of the wealthiest Spanish settlements in the New World. Morgan's exploits brought him immense wealth and notoriety, but they also landed him in hot water with his own government. After the sack of Panama, which was technically illegal under a treaty between England and Spain, Morgan was arrested and sent to England. However, his fame and fortune worked in his favor. Instead of punishment, he received a knighthood and was appointed Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. The line between pirate and privateer was often thin, and Morgan's story is a testament to that ambiguity. His life was a blend of sanctioned piracy and outright rebellion, and his legacy is one of both lawlessness and loyalty to his homeland. And Bonnie, one of the few women to make a name for herself in the pirate world, was as fierce and formidable as any of her male counterparts. Born in Ireland and raised in South Carolina, Anne's fiery spirit and thirst for adventure could not be contained by the societal norms of her time. She abandoned her husband and ran away to the Bahamas, where she met and fell in love with the pirate captain Calico Jack Rackham. Disguised as a man, and joined Rackham's crew and quickly proved her worth in battle. 
Her ferocity and skill with a sword earned her the respect of her fellow pirates. Alongside her friend Mary Red, another female pirate who had also disguised herself as a man and fought with a bravery that became legendary. Their exploits on the high seas were bold and daring, attacking merchant ships and amassing considerable plunder. Anne's pirate career came to an abrupt end in 1720 when their ship was captured by a pirate hunter. While most of the crew, including Rackham, were executed, and and Mary's lives were spared because they were both pregnant. Anne's final fate remains a mystery, adding to the aura of legend that surrounds her. Some say she escaped, others believe she was ransomed by her wealthy father, but the truth remains elusive. The stories of these pirate captains are rich with myth and embellished with time. Blackbeard's fearsome image, Henry Morgan's daring conquests, and and Bonnie's defiant spirit have all been romanticized, but behind the legends were real people who lived extraordinary lives. They were products of their time, driven by a mix of ambition, desperation, and the allure of freedom. In the harsh and unforgiving world of the 17th and 18th centuries, these pirates carved out their destinies with blood and steel. They defied the empires that sought to control them and lived by their own codes. Their tales of adventure, rebellion, and survival continue to resonate, reminding us of a time when the boundaries of the known world were still being charted and the seas were a frontier of untamed possibility. The sun rose over the restless ocean, casting its golden light on the creaking decks of pirate ships. For these seafaring outlaws, each day was a battle for survival, filled with moments of intense camaraderie and deadly peril. Life on a pirate ship was far from the romanticized tales of treasure and adventure. It was a harsh and grueling existence, governed by a strict hierarchy and a deep sense of shared purpose. At the top of this hierarchy was the captain, chosen by the crew for his leadership and skill in navigation and combat. Unlike the autocratic captains of naval vessels, pirate captains were elected, and their authority could be challenged if they failed to lead effectively. This democratic spirit permeated the ship, creating a unique dynamic where every voice had weight and every man had a stake in the success of their endeavors. Beneath the captain was the quartermaster, who held almost equal power, responsible for maintaining order, distributing plunder, and representing the crew's interests. The quartermaster was the mediator, the judge, and often the one who dealt out discipline. Below them were the bosun, the carpenter, the gunner, and other specialized roles, each crucial to the ship's operation. Yet, despite these ranks, the pirate life was marked by a sense of equality that was rare in the rigid class structures of the time. The daily routines of pirates were dictated by the demands of the sea and the constant need to be prepared for battle. Dawn broke with the call to ready the ship, ensuring that the sails were trimmed, the deck was cleared, and the cannons were primed. Each pirate had a role to play, whether it was manning the rigging, tending to the weapons, or standing watch. The discipline and coordination required to keep a pirate ship running smoothly were immense, a testament to the skill and dedication of the crew. Meals were a brief respite in the demanding schedule. The pirate diet was simple and often meager, consisting of hardtack, salted meat, and whatever fresh provisions they could procure from their raids or from friendly ports. Fresh water was a precious commodity, often rationed carefully. Rum, however, flowed more freely, a small comfort in the brutal life at sea. Pirates took what joy they could from their meals, sharing stories and laughter, forging bonds that were essential for their survival. Living conditions on a pirate ship were cramped and harsh. Hammocks were slung between beams, offering little comfort but some respite from the hard deck. The quarters below deck were dark, damp, and often foul-smelling, with little ventilation and constant exposure to the elements. Yet, despite these hardships, pirates found ways to endure, driven by the promise of freedom and the camaraderie of their shipmates. Pirate culture was rich with traditions and superstitions, many of which were born from the seafaring life. Tattoos and piercings were common, each marking a significant event or personal belief. Earrings were said to improve eyesight, while tattoos of anchors and mermaids were believed to offer protection from the sea's dangers. Superstitions abounded, whistling was thought to summon storms, and a red sky at night was a sailor's delight, promising fair weather. Pirates also had their own unique rituals and customs. 
The dividing of plunder was a solemn event, conducted with great care to ensure fairness and maintain trust among the crew. Injuries sustained in battle were compensated, with specific amounts of gold allotted for the loss of limbs or eyes, a practice that underscored the harsh realities of their life. These customs were codified in the Articles of Agreement, a set of rules that each crew member swore to uphold. Music and storytelling were vital parts of pirate culture, providing an escape from the monotony and dangers of their existence. Sea shanties, sung while working or at leisure, bound the crew together, their rhythms echoing the ceaseless movement of the ship. Tales of legendary pirates, sea monsters, and far-off lands fueled their imaginations and kept their spirits high. Superstitions also played a significant role in pirate life, influencing their actions and decisions. The sight of a black cat or ship sailing with bare masts could provoke deep unease. Many pirates carried amulets and charms to protect them from harm, and rituals were performed to ensure good fortune. These beliefs, though often dismissed by outsiders as mere folly, were deeply ingrained and offered a sense of control over the unpredictable nature of their lives. Despite the brutality and hardships, the pirate life offered something that few other paths could, a sense of freedom and agency. Many pirates were drawn to this life by the promise of escaping the oppressive systems of the time. They rejected the rigid hierarchies and injustices of society, choosing instead to live by their own rules. The pirate ship was a floating democracy, a place where one's worth was determined by their skills and loyalty rather than birth or wealth. The bonds forged in this crucible of danger and deprivation were profound. Pirates depended on each other for survival, and this dependence bred a fierce loyalty and camaraderie. They faced the same threats, shared the same spoils, and lived by the same code. This sense of unity was the cornerstone of their society, giving them the strength to face the perils of the sea and the wrath of the world's navies. In the end, the daily life of pirates was a testament to human resilience and the unyielding quest for freedom. It was a life of constant struggle and fleeting pleasures, marked by moments of profound brotherhood and unbreakable spirit. Through their hierarchies, routines, and culture, pirates carved out a unique existence on the fringes of society, leaving behind a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire. The ocean stretched endlessly, a boundless expanse of mystery and danger. Upon its rolling waves sailed the fearsome vessels of the pirates, each ship a floating fortress of freedom and fear. The choice of ship was as critical to a pirate's success as the skill of its crew. Different types of ships offered various advantages, and pirates chose their vessels with cunning precision. The sloop was a favorite among pirates, prized for its speed and agility. These small, single-masted ships could navigate the shallow waters of the Caribbean and Atlantic with ease, allowing pirates to evade the larger, slower naval ships sent to capture them. The sloop's shallow draft enabled it to slip into hidden coves and narrow inlets, perfect for ambushes and quick getaways. Its speed made it ideal for chasing down merchant vessels, closing the distance before the prey could mount a defense. Brigantines, with their two masts and combination of square and fore and aft sails, offered a balance of speed and firepower. They were larger than sloops and could carry more men and more guns, making them formidable opponents in a fight. Brigantines were versatile, capable of long voyages and quick maneuvers, and they became a staple in the pirate fleets. Modifications were essential to turn these ships into the fearsome pirate vessels that struck terror into the hearts of sailors. Pirates stripped their ships of unnecessary weight, removing excess fittings to make them lighter and faster. They reinforced the hulls to withstand cannon fire and added more gun ports to increase their firepower. Every inch of the ship was optimized for speed, stealth, and combat. Armament was a critical aspect of a pirate ship's modifications. Cannons were the primary weapons, and pirates equipped their ships with as many as they could carry. These guns varied in size, from small swivel guns mounted on the rails for close combat to massive cannons capable of blasting holes in the sides of enemy ships. The thunderous roar of a broadside volley, the flash of gunpowder, and the deadly hail of iron shot were the defining sounds of naval battles. But it wasn't just about firepower, it was about how it was used. Pirates were masters of naval tactics and strategies, their cunning and unpredictability making them feared adversaries. 
They used the element of surprise to their advantage, often attacking at dawn or dusk when visibility was low. Their knowledge of the seas, currents, and winds gave them an edge over less experienced sailors. A common tactic was to sail under false colors, hoisting friendly flags to lull their targets into a false sense of security. Once within range, they would raise the Jolly Roger, the infamous skull and crossbones flag, signaling that a pirate attack was imminent. This psychological warfare was as effective as their cannons, causing panic and confusion among their victims. Boarding was the climax of a pirate attack. After disabling the target sails and rigging with precise cannon fire, pirates would draw their ships alongside and throw grappling hooks to pull them close. They would then swarm aboard, swords and pistols at the ready, overwhelming the stunned crew with sheer ferocity. Pirates valued speed and surprise in these engagements, aiming to capture the ship and its cargo with minimal damage. Not all battles were fought on equal terms. Pirates were adept at hit-and-run tactics, avoiding direct confrontations with heavily armed naval vessels. They preferred to pick off weaker, slower targets, using their superior speed and maneuverability to escape if the tide of battle turned against them. This guerrilla warfare approach made them elusive and difficult to defeat. The pirate captain's strategy extended beyond the battlefield. They often formed alliances with other pirate crews, creating fleets that could overpower even the most formidable opponents. These temporary coalitions were based on mutual benefit and shared goals, such as capturing a particularly valuable prize or defending against a common enemy. The combined strength of these pirate fleets was a force to be reckoned with, and their coordinated attacks were devastatingly effective. Life aboard a pirate ship was governed by the need for constant vigilance and readiness. Every crew member had a role in combat, from manning the guns to patching up damage to tending to the wounded. The threat of battle was ever-present, and the crew trained relentlessly to maintain their edge. The smell of gunpowder, the crack of whips driving men to their posts, and the constant tension of impending conflict were the fabric of their daily lives. Despite the chaos and violence, there was an underlying order to pirate life. The pirate code dictated discipline and fairness, ensuring that everyone shared in the plunder and that disputes were settled quickly and justly. This code fostered loyalty and unity, essential for survival in the harsh world of piracy. Pirate ships were not just instruments of war, they were symbols of rebellion and freedom. They represented a rejection of the oppressive regimes and rigid social hierarchies of the time. To the pirates, their ships were sanctuaries of liberty, where the only rule was the code they swore to uphold. They sailed the seas as free men, bound only by their shared pursuit of fortune and adventure. In the end, the story of pirate ships and tactics is one of resilience, ingenuity, and a relentless quest for freedom. These vessels, with their sleek lines and deadly arsenals, were the homes and havens of men and women who dared to defy the world's greatest powers. Through their cunning strategies, fearsome armaments, and unbreakable spirit, they carved out a place in history that continues to captivate and inspire. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a crimson glow over the restless waves as shadows lengthened on the deck. The crew, tense and ready, awaited the command. Their target, a heavily laden merchant ship, blissfully unaware of the danger lurking in the twilight. This moment, teetering on the edge of violence and victory, was a familiar one for the pirates, their lives defined by the thrill and terror of battle. Pirate battles and raids were spectacles of raw courage and cunning strategy. Among the most famous naval engagements was the ferocious encounter between Blackbeard, the notorious pirate captain, and Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the British Royal Navy in 1718. Blackbeard's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was a formidable opponent, its blackened hull and towering masts cutting an intimidating figure against the horizon. As Maynard's ships closed in, Blackbeard, with his wild eyes and smoldering beard, prepared his men for a desperate fight. Blackbeard's tactics were brutal and direct. He relied on the sheer terror his reputation inspired, often intimidating his enemies into surrender before a single shot was fired. But Maynard was determined, engaging in a fierce, close-quarters battle. The cacophony of cannon fire and the clash of steel rang out as the two sides clashed. 
Blackbeard fought with unmatched ferocity, wielding pistols and cutlasses, but ultimately, he fell in a dramatic and bloody melee. His defeat marked the end of an era, but the tale of his last stand continued to haunt the seas. Tactics and strategies in pirate battles varied widely, reflecting the cunning and adaptability of these seafaring outlaws. Speed and surprise were their greatest weapons. They favored swift, agile ships like sloops and brigantines, which allowed them to outmaneuver larger, slower vessels. Pirates often approached their targets under false flags, disguising their intentions until the last possible moment. This ruse de guerre sowed confusion and panic among their victims, leaving them vulnerable to sudden and devastating attacks. One of the most cunning strategies was the use of false boarding. Pirates would fake a retreat, drawing their enemies into a chase, only to turn and unleash a barrage of cannon fire at close range. This tactic, used effectively by the French pirate Jean Lafitte, demonstrated the pirates' mastery of psychological warfare. The sudden reversal of roles and the heat of battle left their pursuers disoriented and demoralized, easy prey for the pirates' ruthless assault. A case study of significant battles would be incomplete without the infamous raid on the port city of Panama by the legendary privateer Henry Morgan in 1671. Morgan, a master strategist and fearless leader, led a fleet of pirate ships through treacherous waters and dense jungle to reach the city. His men, driven by the promise of unimaginable riches, endured unimaginable hardships, facing starvation, disease, and relentless enemy fire. When they finally reached Panama, they launched a surprise attack that overwhelmed the city's defenses. Morgan's raid was a masterpiece of tactical brilliance. He divided his forces, sending one group to create a diversion while the main force attacked from an unexpected direction. The city fell swiftly, its treasures plundered, and its people left in shock and awe. Morgan's success not only made him one of the wealthiest men in the Caribbean, but also cemented his place in the annals of pirate legend. Another iconic raid was the capture of the Spanish galleon Nuestra Señora de la Concepción by the English pirate Bartholomew Sharp in 1680. The Concepción was a heavily armed treasure ship laden with silver and gold from the New World. Sharp, known for his audacity and naval expertise, led a daring assault in the dead of night. His men, using small boats, silently boarded the galleon and quickly overpowered its crew. The hull was immense, and Sharp's bold tactics showcased the pirates' ability to execute highly coordinated and risky operations with precision. Pirate battles were not always grand confrontations on the open sea. Often, they were swift, brutal engagements, fought with an economy of violence that left no room for mercy. The sacking of the town of Maracaibo by the Dutch pirate Lawrence de Graaf in 1682 is a chilling example. De Graaf, a towering figure with a reputation for ruthless efficiency, led his men in a lightning-fast assault on the town, capturing it before the Spanish defenders could mount a significant resistance. The town was plundered, and de Graaf's men left a trail of destruction in their wake, a stark reminder of the pirates' relentless pursuit of wealth and power. The legendary exploits of Nbani and Mary Reed, two of the few female pirates who made their mark during the Golden Age, also stand out. These women fought alongside men, their ferocity in battle earning them respect and fear. In 1720, aboard the Sloop Revenge, captained by the infamous John Calico Jack Rackham, Bonnie and Red fought bravely against a British man of war. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, they refused to surrender, their pistols blazing until they were finally overwhelmed. Their defiance and courage became symbols of the indomitable spirit of piracy. Pirate raids were not limited to ships and coastal towns. The notorious Black Bart, Bartholomew Roberts, took his daring exploits to another level by capturing the Portuguese fleet off the coast of Brazil in 1722. Roberts, commanding a heavily armed brigantine, engaged the fleet in a series of fierce battles. His superior tactics and fearless leadership led to the capture of numerous ships, including a massive treasure-laden galleon. This remarkable feat solidified his reputation as one of the most successful pirates in history. The strategies employed in these engagements were as varied as the pirates themselves. 
From the brute force of Blackbeard's assaults to the calculated cunning of Henry Morgan and the fearless defiance of Bonnie and Mary Red, each battle and raid was a testament to the adaptability and ferocity of these seafaring outlaws. Their legacy is etched in the annals of history, a testament to their relentless pursuit of freedom, fortune, and the thrill of the fight. As the sun set on their bloody battles and daring raids, the echoes of their cannon fire and the cries of their victims lingered in the salty air, a haunting reminder of the golden age of piracy, where the line between myth and reality blurred in the swirling mists of the sea. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a golden hue over the bustling ports and trading hubs of the Caribbean. Amidst the legitimate commerce of sugar, spices, and silk, another trade thrived, one born of plunder and daring. This was the pirate economy, a shadowy underworld where fortunes were won and lost with the rise and fall of the tide. At the heart of piracy lay the simple yet brutal act of looting. Pirates prowled the seas in search of vulnerable prey, merchant ships laden with riches from distant lands. These vessels, filled with silks from China, gold from the Americas, and spices from the East Indies, represented wealth beyond imagination. For the pirates, they were floating treasures waiting to be seized. The capture of a prize ship was a moment of high stakes and high emotion. The adrenaline surged as cannons thundered, and the air filled with smoke and the cries of battle. Pirates swarmed aboard, swords flashing in the sunlight, as they overpowered the desperate defenders. The hold of the captured ship became a scene of frenzied activity, as chests of gold were pried open, jewels spilled onto the deck, and exotic goods were eagerly seized. Distribution of the spoils was governed by the pirate code, a rough and ready set of rules that ensured fairness and order amidst the chaos of plunder. The captain and crew received shares according to their rank and role in the raid. The quartermaster, often elected by the crew, oversaw the division of loot, ensuring that each pirate received their due. This egalitarian approach to wealth distribution was rare in an age defined by rigid social hierarchies, making piracy a tempting alternative for those seeking freedom and fortune. But piracy was not just about seizing wealth, it was also about creating a thriving economy of its own. Pirates established their own ports and strongholds, such as Nassau in the Bahamas and Tortuga off the coast of Hispaniola. These bustling hubs became havens for pirates from around the world, where stolen goods were bought, sold, and traded with reckless abandon. The pirate economy was a vibrant and dynamic marketplace, where exotic treasures changed hands alongside basic necessities. Merchants, smugglers, and adventurers flocked to these lawless ports, drawn by the promise of untold riches and the thrill of living beyond the reach of authority. The trade in stolen goods fueled a bustling economy that rivaled legitimate commerce in scale and profitability. Pirates were not just raiders, they were entrepreneurs of the sea, savvy traders who understood the value of their plunder. They sold captured goods to eager buyers in Europe, the Americas, and beyond, often at a fraction of their true worth. This illicit trade disrupted global markets, driving up prices for legitimate goods and undermining the economies of colonial powers. The impact of piracy on global trade routes was profound and far-reaching. Maritime powers such as England, Spain, and France struggled to protect their shipping lanes from pirate attacks, diverting valuable resources away from their imperial ambitions. The Caribbean, once a thriving center of commerce, became a perilous battleground where pirates and navies clashed for control of the seas. Yet, piracy also had unintended consequences that shaped the course of history. The wealth amassed by pirates found its way into the coffers of European monarchs and financiers, funding wars and political intrigue across the globe. The plunder of Spanish treasure fleets by pirates like Henry Morgan and Francis Drake helped to enrich England and bolster its imperial ambitions, paving the way for the rise of the British Empire. The pirate economy was a double-edged sword, a tantalizing promise of wealth and freedom tempered by the constant threat of violence and betrayal. For every pirate who struck it rich, countless others met a grim fate on the gallows or at the end of a sword. The allure of piracy, with its promise of adventure and fortune, continues to captivate imaginations to this day, a testament to the enduring legacy of those who dared to defy the laws of the sea. 
As the sun set over the horizon, casting long shadows over the bustling ports and trading hubs of the Caribbean, the echoes of pirate laughter and the clink of stolen gold lingered in the salty air. The pirate economy, with its tales of daring raids and hidden treasures, remains a vivid reminder of humanity's eternal quest for wealth, freedom, and the thrill of the chase. The sun dipped low on the horizon, casting an eerie glow over the restless sea. The wind whispered through the rigging, carrying with it tales of terror and defiance. Atop the mast of a weather-beaten ship fluttered a flag, a black canvas adorned with a skull and crossbones, a symbol that struck fear into the hearts of sailors and merchants alike. This was the Jolly Roger, the infamous emblem of piracy that became synonymous with danger and doom on the high seas. The evolution of pirate flags, especially the Jolly Roger, mirrored the evolution of piracy itself, a ruthless yet surprisingly organized profession born out of desperation and defiance. Originally, the Jolly Roger was a simple black flag, flown to signal an imminent attack. Its stark design, a skull above crossed bones, was a stark reminder of the pirate's intentions, surrender or face death. As piracy grew more organized in the 17th and 18th centuries, so too did the design of their flags. Different variations of the Jolly Roger emerged, each with its own macabre twist. Some featured hourglasses, symbolizing the fleeting nature of life, others added swords or spears, emphasizing the pirate's readiness for battle. These symbols were not just for show, they were psychological weapons, designed to intimidate and demoralize their victims. The symbolism of pirate flags went beyond mere decoration. They carried a potent message of defiance and independence. To fly the Jolly Roger was to reject the authority of kings and empires, to embrace a life outside the law. Pirates saw themselves as rebels against a world that had cast them aside, and their flags were symbols of their rebellion, a declaration of war on the established order. In battles, pirate flags took on a life of their own. They were raised high above the masts, catching the wind and fluttering defiantly in the face of their enemies. The sight of the Jolly Roger struck fear into the hearts of sailors, signaling imminent danger and the prospect of a merciless assault. For pirates, the flag was more than a piece of cloth, it was a rallying cry, a symbol of solidarity and shared purpose in the face of overwhelming odds. One of the most famous examples of the psychological impact of pirate flags was during the exploits of Calico Jack Rackham and his crew, including the notorious female pirates and Bonnie and Mary Red. Their flag featured a skull wearing a red bandana, under which crossed swords replaced the typical bones. This flag became a symbol of terror throughout the Caribbean, striking fear into the hearts of merchant captains and naval officers alike. The usage of pirate flags was not limited to battles at sea. Pirates often used them as a form of psychological warfare during raids on coastal towns and settlements. The sight of the Jolly Roger flying from the mast of a pirate ship signaled imminent danger to the residents below. It was a warning that resistance was futile and surrender was the only option if they hoped to spare their lives and possessions from plunder. The impact of pirate flags extended beyond their immediate victims. They became symbols of defiance and rebellion, inspiring legends and stories of daring exploits on the high seas. The image of the Jolly Roger, with its stark black canvas and grim insignia, became iconic in popular culture, immortalized in tales of adventure and romance. The legacy of pirate flags continues to fascinate and intrigue to this day. They are more than relics of a bygone era, they are symbols of human resilience and the relentless pursuit of freedom. The Jolly Roger, with its skull and crossbones, remains a potent symbol of defiance against tyranny and oppression, a reminder that sometimes, the most unlikely heroes can emerge from the shadows to challenge the status quo. As the sun sets on another day at sea, casting long shadows across the restless waves, the legacy of pirate flags lives on. They are more than symbols of piracy, they are symbols of courage, defiance, and the enduring spirit of adventure. The Jolly Roger flies proudly, a testament to the indomitable will of those who dared to defy the odds and sail into history. The sun dipped low over the horizon, painting the sky in shades of crimson and gold as the gentle waves rocked a weathered ship. On its deck stood figures clad in worn leather and faded cloth, their faces weathered by the salt and sun. 
Among them were women, and Bonnie and Mary Reed, infamous names that echoed through history as fearless pirates of the Caribbean. In the swashbuckling world of piracy, women like in Bonnie and Mary Reed defied the norms of their time and shattered expectations. They weren't merely companions or observers, they were active participants, wielding cutlasses and commanding crews with a strength and courage that rivaled any man's. Their roles were not confined to domestic duties or support roles, but extended to every aspect of pirate life, from plundering ships to navigating treacherous waters. And Bonnie, with her fiery spirit and quick temper, was as fearsome a pirate as any man. Born into privilege, but drawn to the allure of the sea, she joined the infamous crew of Calico Jack Rackham, where she quickly earned a reputation for her ferocity in battle. Mary Red, on the other hand, disguised herself as a man from a young age and lived much of her life as a sailor and soldier before joining Rackham's crew. Together, and and Mary became a formidable duo, striking fear into the hearts of sailors and merchants alike. Their contributions to piracy went beyond mere acts of plunder. They challenged societal norms and expectations, proving that women were just as capable, and sometimes more so, than their male counterparts. Their courage and determination inspired both admiration and fear, earning them a place in history as symbols of female empowerment and defiance. Yet, their path was fraught with challenges and dangers. Society viewed female pirates with a mixture of fascination and contempt, often dismissing them as anomalies or temptresses. Women who dared to defy convention and take up arms were seen as threats to the established order, challenging the very foundations of patriarchy and gender roles. Historical accounts of Nbani and Mary Reed's lives are shrouded in myth and legend, adding to their mystique and allure. Tales of their exploits spread like wildfire, embellished and exaggerated with each retelling. But beneath the myths lies a truth far more compelling, a story of courage, resilience, and the quest for freedom in a world defined by oppression and inequality. The reality of Nbani and Mary Reed's lives as pirates was harsh and unforgiving. They faced the constant threat of capture and execution, their lives hanging in the balance with every raid and skirmish. Yet, they persevered, driven by a thirst for adventure and a desire to carve out their own destinies on the high seas. Their legacy continues to inspire countless tales of adventure and romance, immortalized in books and films that celebrate their daring exploits. And Bonnie and Mary Reed have become symbols of female empowerment and resilience, their stories a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dare to defy expectations and chart their own course. As the sun sets on another day at sea, casting long shadows across the restless waves, the legacy of Nbani and Mary Red lives on. They are more than just pirates, they are symbols of courage, defiance, and the enduring spirit of adventure. Their names echo through history as reminders that women, too, have played a vital role in shaping the world we live in, a world where bravery knows no bounds and the seas hold endless possibilities. The courtroom was hushed, the air heavy with anticipation as a figure stood before the judge, accused of crimes that had terrorized the seas. This was no ordinary trial, it was a reckoning with the dark underbelly of maritime life, the world of piracy. Throughout history, the law has grappled with piracy, a crime as old as seafaring itself. From the bustling ports of the Caribbean to the trading hubs of Europe, nations struggled to tame the lawless waters prowled by pirates. It was a battle fought with ink and parchment, where legal decrees and harsh punishments sought to bring order to chaos. Piracy was more than just theft at sea, it was a direct challenge to the authority of empires and monarchs. As piracy flourished in the 17th and 18th centuries, nations responded with a flurry of anti-piracy laws and decrees. These legal measures sought to define piracy as a crime and establish punishments for those who dared to defy the law of the sea. One of the most notable anti-piracy laws was the Piracy Act of 1698, passed by the British Parliament in response to the growing threat of piracy in the Caribbean. This act made piracy a capital offense, punishable by death, and empowered naval courts to try and sentence pirates captured on the high seas. The legal response to piracy was swift and uncompromising. Naval patrols hunted down pirate ships, capturing their crews and bringing them to trial before military tribunals. 
pirate trials were often swift and brutal affairs, conducted with little regard for due process or legal niceties. Evidence was often scant, relying on witness testimony and the confession of captured pirates. Famous pirate trials captivated public imagination and fueled debates about justice and punishment. One such trial was that of Captain William Kidd, a former privateer turned pirate hunter who was accused of turning to piracy himself. His trial in 1701 was a spectacle of scandal and intrigue, drawing crowds eager to witness the downfall of a once respected sailor turned outlaw. The fate of convicted pirates was grim and final. Executions were public affairs, held in town squares or on makeshift gallows overlooking the sea. The condemned were marched to the scaffold, their hands bound and faces masked, as a crowd looked on in morbid fascination. The executioner's blade fell, and another chapter in the bloody saga of piracy came to a close. Yet, piracy was more than just a crime, it was a symbol of resistance and rebellion against oppression. For many pirates, the allure of freedom and adventure outweighed the risks of capture and death. They were outlaws by choice, defying the constraints of society and forging their own path on the open seas. The legacy of piracy lives on in tales of daring escapes and narrow victories, immortalized in books and films that celebrate the spirit of adventure and defiance. The law may have condemned them, but pirates like Blackbeard and Bartholomew Roberts became legends, their names synonymous with courage and cunning in the face of overwhelming odds. As the sun sets on another day at sea, casting long shadows across the restless waves, the legacy of piracy and its legal battles endures. It is a reminder that justice is often a matter of perspective, shaped by the currents of history and the shifting sands of morality. Pirates may be gone, but their stories continue to haunt the imaginations of those who dare to dream of a life beyond the horizon, a life where the sea beckons and freedom awaits those brave enough to seize it. The winds of change whispered through the sails of ships that were more than vessels of wood and canvas, they were pawns in a deadly game of politics and power. This was the world of pirates and politics, where the murky waters of the sea met the murky waters of diplomacy and war. In the annals of history, pirates and governments were strange bedfellows, bound together by a complex web of mutual interests and shifting alliances. Pirates, often viewed as outlaws and renegades, found themselves entangled in the affairs of nations seeking to expand their influence and wealth. One of the most intriguing aspects of pirate politics was privateering, the sanctioned piracy of the seas. Governments issued letters of marque to private ship owners, granting them legal authority to attack and plunder enemy vessels during times of war. Privateers operated under the guise of patriotism, their actions justified as acts of war against rival nations. Privateering blurred the lines between piracy and legitimate warfare, turning sea captains into heroes or villains depending on which side of the conflict you were on. For governments, privateers offered a cost-effective means of disrupting enemy trade and weakening their naval power. For pirates, privateering offered a chance at legitimacy and wealth, albeit at the risk of capture and execution if caught by the wrong authorities. The role of pirates in colonial conflicts was equally complex and far-reaching. Pirates often found themselves recruited as mercenaries or hired guns by colonial powers eager to gain the upper hand in territorial disputes and trade rivalries. In return for their services, pirates were promised amnesty, pardons, or even a share of the spoils. The interaction between pirates and governments was a delicate dance of diplomacy and deception. Pirates, with their intimate knowledge of the seas and ruthless tactics, were valuable assets to colonial powers seeking to assert dominance over lucrative trade routes and strategic ports. Yet, their allegiance was always fleeting, their loyalty bought with promises of gold and glory. One infamous example of pirates playing a pivotal role in politics was during the War of the Spanish Succession in the early 18th century. The British government, desperate to weaken Spanish and French naval power in the Caribbean, turned to pirates like Henry Jennings and Benjamin Hornigold. These notorious buccaneers, once feared for their raids on merchant ships, were now hailed as heroes of the crown, leading daring expeditions against enemy strongholds and securing vital victories at sea. But politics and piracy were fickle companions, their alliance forged in the crucible of necessity and expediency. 
As quickly as governments embraced pirates as allies, they could just as swiftly condemn them as enemies of the state. The same privateers who once flew the flag of a nation could find themselves branded as pirates and outlaws if their fortunes shifted or their usefulness expired. The legacy of pirates and politics is a testament to the complexity of human ambition and the enduring allure of the sea. It is a tale of courage and betrayal, of loyalty and treachery, where alliances were forged in blood and gold. Pirates, with their lust for freedom and thirst for adventure, navigated the treacherous waters of geopolitics with cunning and charisma, leaving an indelible mark on history. As the sun sets on another chapter of piracy and politics, the echoes of their exploits linger in the windswept sails of history. They remind us that the sea, with its vastness and mystery, has always been a stage for the drama of human ambition. A place where pirates and politicians alike sought to carve out their destinies against the backdrop of empires and oceans. Imagine standing on the bustling streets of 18th century London, where the air is thick with the aroma of spices and the shouts of merchants hawking their wares. Amidst this vibrant scene, a pamphlet catches your eye, a vivid illustration of swashbuckling pirates, their faces fierce and their cutlasses gleaming in the sun. This was the birth of pirates in literature and popular culture, a phenomenon that would capture the hearts and imaginations of people for centuries to come. Early literary depictions of pirates painted them as larger-than-life figures, embodying the ideals of freedom and rebellion against oppression. From Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe to Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, pirates were portrayed as daring adventurers navigating treacherous waters in search of buried treasure and glory. These tales captured the essence of piracy, the thrill of the chase, the clash of swords, and the lure of unknown horizons. In the realm of literature, pirates became symbols of defiance and independence, challenging authority and societal norms. Long John Silver, with his peg leg and silver tongue, emerged as one of fiction's most memorable pirates, a charismatic rogue whose cunning and charm captivated readers and blurred the lines between hero and villain. But it was in the 20th century that pirates truly made their mark on popular culture, thanks in no small part to Hollywood's silver screen. Films like Captain Blood starring Errol Flynn and Pirates of the Caribbean featuring Johnny Depp as the eccentric Captain Jack Sparrow breathed new life into pirate lore, blending adventure, romance, and swashbuckling action in equal measure. These cinematic depictions of pirates captured the imagination of audiences around the world, transforming them from feared outlaws to romanticized anti-heroes. Pirates became icons of rebellion and adventure, their exploits immortalized on celluloid and celebrated in theme parks and merchandise. In the world of gaming, pirates continue to reign supreme, with titles like Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag, and Sea of Thieves allowing players to sail the high seas, plunder treasure, and engage in epic naval battles. These games offer immersive experiences that bring the thrill of piracy to life, allowing players to explore vast open worlds and forge their own pirate legends. The romanticization of pirates persists to this day, their image adorned on t-shirts, tattoos, and Halloween costumes. The allure of buried treasure and swashbuckling escapades continues to captivate audiences of all ages, proving that the legacy of piracy is as enduring as the oceans themselves. Yet. Beneath the romantic veneer lies a darker reality. The true history of piracy is steeped in violence, greed, and hardship, a far cry from the adventures depicted in literature and film. Pirates were ruthless criminals who preyed upon merchant ships and terrorized coastal communities, leaving devastation in their wake. Still, it is the romanticized version of pirates, the daring buccaneers with hearts of gold and a thirst for freedom, that continues to resonate with audiences. Their stories remind us of the power of imagination and the timeless appeal of tales of adventure and heroism against all odds. As the sun sets on another day, casting long shadows across the restless waves, the legacy of pirates in literature and popular culture endures. They are more than just characters in a story, they are symbols of courage, defiance, and the enduring spirit of exploration. Their tales remind us that even in the darkest of times, there is always room for a little swashbuckling adventure and a touch of pirate gold. In the dying light of the 18th century, as the sun dipped below the horizon, it cast a somber glow over the once-thriving world of piracy. 
the golden age of piracy, that tumultuous era of daring raids and swashbuckling adventures, was drawing to a close. But how did this vibrant and notorious chapter in maritime history come to an end? For decades, pirates had prowled the seas with impunity, their black flags fluttering defiantly in the ocean breeze. Yet, as the 18th century wore on, the tide began to turn against them. A confluence of factors conspired to bring about the decline of piracy, signaling the end of an era that had both terrorized and captivated the world. One of the primary factors leading to the decline of piracy was the concerted efforts of naval powers to eradicate piracy from the seas. Nations such as Britain, Spain, and France, once reluctant to devote resources to combating pirates, began to view them as a threat to their growing empires and lucrative trade routes. Naval patrols intensified, scouring the seas for pirate hideouts and hunting down notorious captains. Key events and turning points marked the decline of the golden age of piracy. The Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, which ended the War of the Spanish Succession, ushered in a period of relative peace and stability in Europe. With the waning of state-sponsored privateering and the tightening grip of naval authorities, pirates found themselves increasingly isolated and vulnerable. The infamous pirate haven of Nassau in the Bahamas, once a bustling hub of piracy, fell to British forces in 1718. The capture and execution of the notorious pirate Blackbeard in 1718 off the coast of North Carolina sent shockwaves through the pirate community, signaling the beginning of the end for many of the most feared buccaneers. Transitioning to later forms of piracy, some former pirates turned to more covert and clandestine activities. Smuggling and illicit trade became more common as the allure of open piracy waned. Others sought amnesty and pardons from colonial authorities, abandoning their life of plunder in exchange for a chance at redemption. The decline of the golden age of piracy was not just the end of an era, it was a cultural and economic shift that reverberated across the Atlantic world. Ports once teeming with pirates and privateers now saw a resurgence of lawful trade and commerce. The seas, once plagued by the specter of piracy, became safer for merchant vessels and travelers alike. Yet, the legacy of piracy endured, its tales of adventure and defiance passed down through generations. The exploits of pirates like Blackbeard and Bonnie and Calico Jack Rackham became the stuff of legend, their names etched into the annals of history. As the last embers of daylight faded into night, casting shadows across the vast expanse of the ocean, the golden age of piracy slipped quietly into memory. But the spirit of those daring buccaneers lives on, a testament to the enduring allure of freedom, adventure, and the indomitable human spirit that once sailed the high seas in search of fortune and glory. Imagine standing on the shores of a remote island, the salty breeze carrying whispers of a long-forgotten past. In the depths below, hidden treasures and lost stories lie entwined with the ocean's embrace. This is the world of archaeological discoveries, a journey through time and history, where artifacts and shipwrecks reveal the untold tales of pirates who once ruled the seas. Among the most captivating discoveries are the shipwrecks themselves, skeletons of wooden vessels that once sailed proudly across the waves. Each wreck is a time capsule, preserving not just the physical remains of a ship, but also clues to the lives and voyages of those who sailed aboard. From the sturdy hulls of sloops to the majestic frames of galleons, these wrecks offer a glimpse into the maritime technology and craftsmanship of centuries past. One such notable discovery is the wreck of the Queen Anne's Revenge, the flagship of the infamous pirate Blackbeard. Discovered off the coast of North Carolina in 1996, this wreck has yielded a trove of artifacts, including cannons, navigational tools, and personal items belonging to Blackbeard and his crew. Each artifact tells a story, a tale of battles fought, treasures sought, and lives lost at sea. Archaeological studies of pirate shipwrecks provide invaluable insights into the daily lives and practices of pirates. By analyzing the distribution of artifacts and the layout of the ship, researchers can reconstruct the social dynamics aboard, from the roles of captains and quartermasters to the living conditions of the crew. For instance, the discovery of personal items such as combs, bottles, and coins offers a glimpse into the personal lives and routines of pirates during their voyages. 
Beyond shipwrecks, archaeological excavations of pirate strongholds and coastal settlements shed light on the broader impact of piracy on local economies and societies. Sites like Port Royal in Jamaica, once a notorious pirate haven, have yielded a wealth of artifacts, from pottery shards and tobacco pipes to remnants of taverns and fortifications. These discoveries not only enrich our understanding of pirate culture, but also highlight the complex interactions between pirates, indigenous peoples, and colonial authorities. The reconstruction of pirate history through material culture is a multidisciplinary endeavor, blending archaeology with history, anthropology, and maritime studies. By piecing together fragments of pottery, weaponry, and navigational instruments, researchers can trace the movements of pirate fleets, identify trade networks, and uncover evidence of pirate activities along coastlines and trade routes. But perhaps the most poignant discoveries are those that connect us directly to the individuals who once sailed the seas as pirates. Personal items like rings, buckles, and even skeletal remains offer a glimpse into the lives and identities of pirates who lived and died far from their homelands. These artifacts humanize the pirates, transforming them from mere legends into flesh and blood individuals with hopes, dreams, and fears. As the sun sets on another day, casting long shadows over the archaeological sites that dot the coastlines and seabeds of the world, the legacy of piracy continues to unfold. Each discovery, whether a rusted cannon or a weathered coin, adds another piece to the puzzle of pirate history, enriching our understanding of a bygone era that continues to captivate our imagination. Through archaeological discoveries, we embark on a journey not just through time, but through the depths of the human experience. It is a journey marked by perseverance, discovery, and the enduring quest to uncover the truths hidden beneath the waves. And as we sift through the sands of history, we are reminded that the stories of pirates, those swashbuckling adventurers who dared to defy the seas, are as real and as compelling as the artifacts they left behind. In the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, where winds whisper tales of distant lands and waves carry the hopes and fears of countless souls, piracy once reigned as both scourge and savior. This is a tale not just of plunder and peril, but of the intricate web of interactions that shaped the Atlantic world, a world where pirates, with their black flags unfurled, left an indelible mark on the shores they touched. At the heart of piracy's role in the Atlantic trade lies a paradox, a clash of greed and necessity, of lawlessness and order. For centuries, European powers vied for dominance over lucrative trade routes that connected continents and cultures. From the bustling ports of London to the bustling markets of West Africa, ships laden with goods sailed across the Atlantic, their cargoes fueling the economies of empires. Yet amidst this bustling commerce, piracy emerged as a shadowy force, disrupting the carefully laid plans of merchants and monarchs alike. Pirates prowled the trade routes, preying on vulnerable ships laden with treasures from distant lands. Their swift vessels and ruthless tactics struck fear into the hearts of sailors and traders, turning the Atlantic into a battleground where survival often meant the difference between wealth and ruin. The impact of piracy rippled far beyond the immediate loss of cargo and lives. In European societies, tales of pirate attacks fueled a sense of vulnerability and insecurity, prompting calls for increased naval patrols and tighter regulations. In African communities along the coast, piracy brought both chaos and opportunity, as pirates traded captured goods for supplies and provisions. Yet, amidst the chaos, piracy also forged unlikely bonds between peoples and cultures. Pirates often formed alliances with indigenous groups and escaped slaves, creating a diverse and resilient network that transcended traditional boundaries. These alliances were born out of necessity, as pirates sought safe havens and allies in their struggle against powerful naval forces. The economic impact of piracy on colonial economies was profound, albeit unpredictable. While piracy disrupted trade and destabilized markets, it also sparked innovation and adaptation. Merchants and shipbuilders developed faster vessels and stronger defenses to protect against pirate attacks, while colonial authorities implemented stricter laws and harsher penalties for piracy. In the Caribbean, once a hotbed of piracy, colonial economies boomed as pirates turned privateers sought amnesty and turned their guns against rival empires. 
Privateering, a legalized form of piracy sanctioned by governments, allowed former buccaneers to channel their skills into defending colonial interests and expanding territorial ambitions. As the sun sets on another day in the Atlantic world, casting long shadows over the ports and harbors that once echoed with the shouts of sailors and the clink of coin, the legacy of piracy endures. It is a legacy marked by contradiction and complexity, a testament to the enduring impact of human ambition and adversity on the world's oceans. Through piracy, we glimpse the interconnectedness of nations and cultures, a tapestry woven from threads of trade, conflict, and cooperation. And as we navigate the currents of history, we are reminded that the story of piracy is not just a chapter in the annals of maritime history, but a reflection of the timeless struggle for power, wealth, and freedom on the high seas. In the vast annals of maritime history, there exists a shadowy figure that continues to captivate the imagination, the pirate. These swashbuckling adventurers, with their black flags and tales of daring escapades, have left an indelible mark on the world's oceans and the course of human history. Pirates, once feared and reviled, have paradoxically shaped the very laws and customs that govern the seas today. Their exploits forced nations to confront the challenges of maritime law and naval warfare, leading to the development of treaties and conventions aimed at curbing piracy and protecting international trade. The concept of universal jurisdiction, a principle allowing any nation to prosecute pirates regardless of where crimes were committed, emerged as a direct response to the global threat posed by piracy. Yet, beyond their legal legacy, pirates have also become symbols of rebellion and freedom. In popular culture, they embody a romanticized ideal of independence and defiance against oppressive authority. From novels like Treasure Island to blockbuster films such as Pirates of the Caribbean, pirates have captured the hearts and minds of generations, inspiring tales of adventure and treasure hunts that endure to this day. Historically, pirates have been both heroes and villains, depending on the perspective from which their stories are told. In some accounts, they are noble outlaws fighting against injustice and tyranny. In others, they are ruthless criminals, plundering ships and terrorizing coastal communities. The reality, of course, lies somewhere in between, a complex tapestry woven from conflicting narratives and subjective interpretations. The cultural significance of pirates extends far beyond their historical deeds. They represent a spirit of daring exploration and bold defiance, challenging conventional norms and pushing the boundaries of what is deemed possible. Their legacy lives on in the symbols they left behind, the skull and crossbones of the Jolly Roger, a potent emblem of fear and resistance that continues to resonate in modern times. But perhaps the true legacy of pirates lies in their enduring impact on the human psyche. They remind us of the eternal struggle for freedom and justice and the lengths to which individuals will go in pursuit of their dreams. Pirates, with their tales of adventure and daring, embody the timeless quest for treasure, whether that treasure be gold doubloons or the elusive promise of freedom itself. As we reflect on the legacy of pirates, we are reminded of their lasting imprint on our cultural heritage and collective imagination. They challenge us to question authority, to defy the status quo, and to seek our own path in a world often fraught with uncertainty and danger. In this sense, pirates are more than mere historical figures, they are symbols of resilience, independence, and the relentless pursuit of dreams against all odds. So, as we gaze upon the horizon where the sea meets the sky, let us remember the pirates who once sailed these waters. Their legacy is not just a footnote in history, but a testament to the enduring power of human spirit and the boundless possibilities that await those brave enough to chart their own course. In the modern age, where skyscrapers touch the clouds and technology connects us across continents, the echoes of piracy from centuries past still reverberate in the shadows of today's seas. Piracy, once the scourge of the golden age, persists in new forms, challenging nations and testing the boundaries of law and humanity. Contemporary piracy, unlike its romanticized counterpart, is a stark reminder of the enduring struggle for control over maritime territories and global trade routes. From the Gulf of Aden to the South China Sea, modern pirates armed with automatic weapons and fast boats prey on vulnerable ships, hijacking cargoes and taking hostages for ransom. These acts of piracy disrupt vital supply chains, endanger lives, and undermine international security. 
In contrast to the buccaneers of old, today's pirates operate in a world governed by stringent maritime laws and multinational cooperation. Naval forces from various nations patrol pirate-infested waters, responding swiftly to distress calls and conducting anti-piracy operations. Legal frameworks, such as the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOSE, empower nations to prosecute pirates captured on the high seas, ensuring accountability and justice for their crimes. Yet, despite these efforts, modern piracy continues to pose a significant challenge to global stability. The social and economic impacts ripple far beyond the immediate victims, affecting industries reliant on maritime trade and the livelihoods of coastal communities. For these communities, piracy is not just a threat but a harsh reality that demands resilience and adaptation in the face of adversity. Lessons gleaned from history provide valuable insights into combating modern piracy. The experiences of nations during the golden age of piracy offer parallels to today's challenges, highlighting the importance of international cooperation and adaptive strategies in combating maritime crime. Just as pirate hunting fleets once scoured the Caribbean, modern navies and coast guards collaborate to patrol strategic choke points and safeguard shipping lanes. Moreover, the socioeconomic root causes of piracy, from poverty and political instability to environmental degradation, underscore the complexity of addressing this global issue. Sustainable development initiatives aimed at improving living conditions and providing alternative livelihoods for vulnerable coastal communities represent a proactive approach to reducing the incentives for piracy. In the realm of maritime law and policy, the evolution of legal frameworks reflects a concerted effort to adapt to changing threats and realities. Regional agreements and cooperative mechanisms, such as information sharing and joint patrols, strengthen the collective response to piracy and enhance maritime security worldwide. These initiatives build upon the lessons of history, emphasizing the need for proactive measures to deter, disrupt, and prosecute pirates operating in international waters. Ultimately, the story of modern piracy is not just one of criminality and conflict, but also of resilience and resolve. It challenges us to confront the complexities of a globalized world where the seas remain both a pathway for prosperity and a battleground for security. As nations strive to navigate these turbulent waters, the lessons of history serve as a compass, guiding us towards a future where the scourge of piracy is consigned to the annals of history, and the oceans once again become a symbol of freedom and opportunity for all who sail upon them. In the vast expanse of human history, few phenomena capture our imaginations quite like piracy. From the daring exploits of Blackbeard to the tragic tales of Enbani, piracy has woven itself into the fabric of our collective consciousness, leaving behind a legacy that continues to intrigue and inspire. At its heart, piracy is a story of contrasts, the clash between lawlessness and order, freedom and captivity, adventure and peril. It speaks to our innate fascination with rebellion against authority and the allure of life on the edge, where danger lurks beneath every wave and treasure lies just beyond the horizon. Throughout the ages, pirates have been both vilified and celebrated, romanticized in literature and feared on the high seas. They embody a spirit of defiance against the constraints of society, forging their own rules and carving out a precarious existence amidst the uncertainties of maritime life. Yet, beyond the swashbuckling tales and skull-adorned flags, piracy also serves as a mirror reflecting deeper truths about human nature. It reveals the fragility of order in a world where desperation and opportunity collide, where individuals are driven to extremes in pursuit of survival or riches. In this light, piracy becomes a lens through which we explore themes of justice and morality, empathy and exploitation. The enduring fascination with piracy extends far beyond historical curiosity. It resonates with our yearning for freedom and adventure, reminding us of the timeless appeal of tales where ordinary individuals defy the odds and chart their own destinies. Pirates, with their audacity and resilience, embody the spirit of resilience, daring us to challenge conventions and embrace the unknown. Moreover, piracy offers insights into the complexities of human behavior and societal dynamics. It forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about power and privilege, about the thin line that separates heroism from villainy. 
As we unravel the layers of pirate lore, we confront our own preconceptions and biases, recognizing that history is often more nuanced than the stories we tell. In conclusion, the legacy of piracy endures not only in the annals of history, but also in our collective consciousness. It serves as a testament to the enduring power of myth and legend, shaping our perceptions of courage and rebellion. As we reflect on the tales of Blackbeard and Bonnie and countless others who sailed the seas in search of fortune and freedom, we are reminded of the timeless allure of the pirate's life, a life defined by risk, reward, and the relentless pursuit of independence. Through piracy, we glimpse a world where boundaries are blurred, where morality is tested, and where the human spirit persists against all odds. It is a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire, challenging us to explore the depths of our imagination and the complexities of our shared history. In the end, the story of piracy is not just a chapter in the annals of maritime lore, it is a reflection of the indomitable spirit that defines us as adventurers, dreamers, and seekers of the unknown.